teenage serial killer is a low-budget 1993 independent horror film written and directed by Sarah Jacobson. The name references the 1957 film I Was a Teenage Werewolf, and the film itself is a feminism-driven subversion of the classic slasher movie plot, where instead of an evil man killing women for the entertainment of male audiences, we have an evil woman, or technically a teenager, killing men for the entertainment of a female audience. The image that paints in your mind is probably absolutely correct. There is zero nuance to this plot. It's just a woman killing men because she has an anti-male agenda. It is pretty much exactly what anti-feminists think of when they think of stories that feminists are into. The plot centers on serial killer Mary going around and killing men. Duh, right? Well, that's pretty much all you can say about it. The men she targets are usually annoying or sexist, but other times they're just men being present in the world and she comes in and kills them. There's a man going on a sexist rant, and she spikes his beer with rat poison. And there's a guy who takes off his condom in the middle of having sex, and a rather graphic sex scene, actually. So she strangles him while having sex, overtly attacking him with sexual violence and sticking a banana in his mouth as a symbolic phallic rape. And then a guy catcalls her, so she runs him over with a truck and has a cigarette. You've come a long way, baby. What's this? White lines on the film? Well, we better put in this scene before it, so it looks like it's intentional symbolism, indicating white lines over love or something. The plot shakes up a bit when Mary gets a boyfriend named Henry, a male ally who also hates men, and they go around killing men together. The best part of the film is the comedy that comes with evil people acting lovey-dovey while doing awful things. Very intentional comedy, I might add. It's the only way I can um, find a reaction to the white dominated male society is patriarchal. This guy I... has no idea what the line is. Eventually she catches him effectively cheating on her by bringing a female victim after killing her boyfriend by himself, and she has to kill him because he's not true to the cause. I knew it couldn't last. This makes her sad. Aw, poor her. A homeless guy sees her and tries to comfort her, and she opens up about her backstory where her father sexually assaulted her. The guy tries to use this as an opening to hit on her, and she threatens to kill him, but stops because she decides that the more important thing to do is tell the world her story. So she leaves. And that's the film. It's really nothing special. In 2016, in 1993, this was revolutionary stuff. It was shown at many independent film festivals, earning Sarah Jacobson the moniker of Queen of Underground Film, and it was considered one of the defining expressions of third-wave feminism back when it first emerged. To a modern feminist, this sounds bizarre. The film shows none of the nuance we have come to anticipate from third-wave feminism, and it feels like a clumsy second-wave production made by people who knew nothing about horror films, or how to broadcast that feminism isn't about hate. And that is true, but what needs to be recognized is the context of when it was made. As much as it was a defining third wave expression then, it's a very transitionary expression. Not nearly as distinct from the second wave as the third wave is now after over 20 years of development. The feminist interpretation of the slasher genre has also changed significantly since then. The span of time I would typically consider the second wave, spanning roughly from 1950 to 1990, saw slasher films as fundamentally misogynistic expressing men's frustrations towards women through the vehicle of an antagonistic male figure preying on women. The fact that the slasher figure was so evil would serve to distance him from the male audience so that they would feel grounded in moral superiority to him, while simultaneously appreciating him enacting violence against women as an expression of their frustrations. Film critics Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert not only endorsed this interpretation, but were personally very alarmed by what they saw as rampant misogyny and spoke out against it several times, most notably in the 1980 sneak previews episode Women in Danger, where they described slasher films as a reactionary backlash to the feminist movement of the 1970s. When you view women constantly as sport, being stabbed, I think that's a sort of a sick notion that just sort of makes it it's degrading. These days, it's a pretty well-known fact that women are really into horror, women are starting to break into horror productions, and horror films are starting to cater to their female audience. There are major productions that could aptly be described as feminist horror films, including Ginger Snaps, It Follows, and American Mary. And part of the reason for that is the extended feminist analysis of the horror genre that came in the 1990s. 
with The Monstrous Feminine by Barbara Creed and Men, Women, and Chainsaws by Carol J. Clover, the latter of which gave us the term Final Girl to describe the last remaining female victim in a horror movie, who is often an empowered figure to defeat the villain or at least escape. With an understanding of the final girl came a perception of horror films as having great feminist potential, if not always realized potential. Sarah Jacobson was not working with that conception of the horror genre. She was going off of the Siskel and Ebert women in danger conception. She described her inspiration for the film as a reaction to the solar killer chic that was so in at the time. I thought it would be fun to kind of turn the tables on it all. You had all these guys going, yeah, kill the girl, kill the girl. And it was like, hey, why don't we just kill the guy? But only the stupid ones, because, you know, not all guys are bad. Some of my best friends are men. It's possible she didn't understand what she was observing by filtering it through her preconceived notions of why men like slasher films. Or maybe she happened to watch it with a bunch of jerks. Or maybe the Siskel and Ebert conception was accurate in isolated circumstances. I really couldn't say. Watching the film, I know intellectually that women got something out of Mary's brutality, and that this was a scream of righteous female frustration at men's sexism. I understand it, but I can't appreciate it. It is awkward as hell just how disrespectful it is to men. There is no nuance to the man-hating on display. It isn't intelligent commentary on the order of modern feminist storytelling, like even Jennifer's body's critical attitude of male behavior. It is pretty much exactly what an anti-feminist accuses every feminist work of being. Whenever I defend a work from them, I might as well say, hey, it's not like it's I was a teenage serial killer. I can respect that it had feminist value back in 1993 with their conception of horror films, but it is pretty awful now. My mind keeps going back to Valerie Solanus, a truly awful human being popular in some second wave radical feminist circles. She wrote a hateful diatribe called the Scum Manifesto about the evils of men and described the idea that trans women are self-hating men who symbolically rape the female body. The word scum is reportedly an acronym standing for Society for Cutting Up Men. And she tried to kill Andy Warhol, the soup can guy. She is among the worst of feminism, and she is unfortunately still venerated as a hero by some segments of modern radical feminism, who usually try to call her a satirist who shot Andy Warhol by accident while aiming at another guy she had a financial dispute with. It's comparable to modern support of the Confederate States and using the battle flag for Southern pride. No matter how much her image is twisted to appear decent, the toxic qualities of her ideology are reproduced. It's possible that Sarah Jacobson was a fan of hers. I hope not. A Google search brings up no discussion of this, but there are a fair number of people who list I was a teenage serial killer on feminist film recommendations alongside I Shot Andy Warhol, a biopic about you-know-who. This connection alone raises some warning flags, but maybe it's just a coincidence. Sarah Jacobson's quip about some of her best friends being men makes me hope that it's not the case. Nevertheless, the film is worryingly similar in its disrespectful content. Maybe the introduction of the internet made feminists more respectful to men. The internet helps everyone organize much better, so anti-feminists are pretty much all aware of Valerie Solanas, where I imagine she was previously a niche subject. Now that feminists are induced to defend their views from being interpreted as being the same as her, maybe there's more of a tendency to project the idea that, no, feminism isn't about hating men. We love men. We're fighting for everyone's liberation from harsh gender roles. And from there, maybe modern feminism becomes more respectful. I don't like I was a teenage serial killer. It's interesting as a historical curiosity and nothing more. I am glad to say that modern feminist horror movies are nothing like it. There are small snippets of feminist points scattered throughout the film, but it never comes together into a solid feminist message. And the fact that they're spouted by two serial killers does nothing for the perceived validity of the statements. Let's not kid ourselves. Mary and Henry are far from Spike and Drusilla. I think Henry was brought in to challenge heteronormativity by making him somewhat of a queer element, but it is extremely clumsy in execution. He is effectively gay without actually being gay. Not that he's bi, just that he's a straight guy who can fulfill the function of being Mary's boyfriend while still having the perceived qualities of a gay man to make him work as a male ally. He hates straight men because he sees how heterosexuality contributes to patriarchal oppression, and he came to see this because his grandfather dressed him as a girl, which kind of brings to mind being gay as a psychological complex, and he really admires feminine strength which combines with the cross-dressing thing to make him sound like a trans woman, but not really because he's a straight man who can be Mary's boyfriend. And Mary uses the imagery of gay male rape to dominate a victim, and it's a mess. 
Mary being the victim of childhood sexual assault is beyond cliché, and it doesn't really do anything interesting with the character or make any point besides men bad, treat pretty. This basic idea is actually done better in, oh my god, the last man on planet Earth. With Agent Hastings revealing her sympathetic past to the protagonist, Hope, which humanizes her as a butch lesbian in Hollywood standards, even as it works with the idea that sexual trauma turned her gay. One of the most anti-feminist movies ever succeeds at humanizing its female antagonist better than I was a teenage serial killer. And that says it all.